Hi, I'm Liz Larson with The Art of Frosting, back with some cake decorating basics. Today we begin our Halloween series, and we're going to start with one that's really beginner level, but looks great. We're going to do this bat cake. Super easy, let's get started. I want to be sure to get the right proportions of our candy melt bat for our moon. So I'm taking my pan and making a circle so I know exactly what size I'm working with. Now I want to sketch out my bat here so that before I actually make it in candy melt, I have it in the right size. Now if you're not good with freehand, just Google bat images and find a bat that you really like and just trace it. I've got my parchment with my melted candy melt and we are going to use a drop line technique where we're up above our paper here and we're just squeezing ever so lightly. In fact, you don't really even have to squeeze much at all. Just let the line drop. This is really the best way to get a nice thick line. Now I just want to come back in and start to fill in. Now I don't want to fill in completely because then it would be way too thick. I'm going to fill along these edges lightly and spread with the tip of my bag here. So continue now to just fill around and then start to come in and fill in about like this. You'll come back in very delicately with your palette knife and smooth. Now remember this is another reason why this needs to be warm enough to be able to spread. When we pull this off we'll actually use the opposite side of this so it'll look a lot flatter. We're going to utilize the, the solid side of this. Now go ahead and put that aside. You want to let it dry for probably 30 minutes or put it in the fridge for 5 to 10 minutes. While I'm here I decided that I want to come in and make myself a couple of little bats. I'm just going to freehand those and that way I have them to use if I want to move them around the cake after it's done. So I'm starting here with just an eight inch round. It's split and filled. It could be a double layer or a 10 or any size you want. But I planned my bat for an eight inch round. Now we're gonna use a trick that you've seen me do a lot of times. And it's just color striping. I just got my bag with a coupler in the end, no tip. You could even use it without a coupler if you want to, but the coupler gives me a little more control. I'm going to use some blue Wilton gel and some purple Wilton gel. So you can use paste colors, you could even use liquid if you've mixed it with your icing a little bit. And I'm just going to take some of my purple and I want it to be pretty intense. I've got it on the edge of my spatula I'm just going to wipe it right up the side of my bag. You can see now it's full of color. Just get the raw color right up in there. Be sure to wipe your spatula in between and then take your blue. Now you could do this with black and yellow or green and purple, green and blue, however you want your moon to look. I'm going to use purple and blue. And you just want to wipe it right up the other side. So you've got purple on one side, blue on the other. Then just go ahead and fill your bag with your icing. I'm just going to use white. And then you want to use the technique of just shaking it right down in there. And I have a bowl handy that you can start to squeeze. And you want to make sure that both colors are coming out. You can see that there. And I'm just going to take my bag here. And I want my colors to be on either side, so just make sure you're the right way there. I'm just going to spin my turntable and lay down a spiral just right on top. Next I want to take my bench knife and you guys have seen this and I want to put the edge of my bench knife right in the middle of that spiral and just start to spin and it's going to start to blend those colors together and give me the eerie moon look that I want. Wipe off the excess and wipe your bench knife so you don't end up with, with muddied colors. 
clean up your edge there just slightly. Now I really like the way this has turned out so far. So I am just gonna just gently come back one more time just to clean up some of my rough edges and then come around the side and clean up my edges there too. And you can see I've got a, a spiral color in there for my moon. I'm gonna use my bag again and just put on a number 23 star tip. I'm just gonna use the colors that I have in my bag and I'm just going to put a straight show. So squeeze and release, see how it'll give me the combinations of colors. This would be really cool with yellow and black. Let's see, I've got some really nice stripes there. Next, I've moved my cake down so that I can work on the top here so I have a better surface. And I've got my candy melt bat and I'm gonna very gently remove it. It's great to use an offset spatula for this. Just very gently separate it here. And it's already separated quite a bit. As they dry, they tend to do that. And I can place that here. I want my one edge to stick off. Looks kind of cool. And then I've got my little bat shapes here, my little ones that I want to place on there. You could also pipe these little extra bats on if you wanted. I've also got just a couple of what are called dragees, and they're just silver balls. And I'm just gonna place a few of them around so that they look just a little bit like stars. So that's it. That's our bat cake. Really easy. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It was fun to make. And as you can see, it is really simple. Beginners can do it and definitely great for you pros who need something quick. You can find me at The Art of Frosting on Facebook and www.theartoffrosting.blogspot.com. At Facebook and Blogspot, I share your work and mine and some of Leah's. Don't forget to subscribe. It's always free. And there's something new at curious.com. Look up my name, Liz Larson, and there's a whole beginning cake decorating course. 10 lessons for those of you who are beginners. Goes from borders all the way through to flowers. See y'all again real soon. Bye. Thank you.